Yeah, my, my name is Fred Sharp, and I am one of the investigators on the Whale SETI team. I'm also a primary investigator with the Alaska Whale Foundation, based out here in the waters of Chatham Strait. My name is Debbie Collier, and I am the Director of Grants and Contracts at the SETI Institute. My name is Lisa Walker, and I am a whale sun theorist. We have a group of scientists that are trying to understand how intelligent beings communicate. Lawrence Doyle, one of our principal investigators, uh, had a Templeton proposal selected and the focus of the proposal is to understand communication between humpback whales and also whether or not humpback whales show empathy uh, with other living beings. Well, as we've seen, the waters surrounding us are teeming with humpback whales and it's a great place for them to come and forage and it's a fantastic place to come and conduct various forms of research. We're particularly interested in their acoustics that these animals are producing when they're out in these waters. So part of our work here is to do some interactive playbacks, try to determine what some of the function of their diverse vocalizations are. We are testing whether we can broadcast sounds out into the water with an underwater speaker and see if we can engage a humpback whale to respond. What we try and do is take sounds that are current in the water, so what we're going to be doing is uh, monitoring uh, the different sounds that they're making, ideally recording those and playing them back immediately such that they're fresh sounds. And by that we hope to sort of trigger the humpback's curiosity and engage with the animal. We will be using, in terms of equipment, we will be using three different computers. We will be using two hydrophones, up to six different cameras, and also in terms of monitoring sound in the water, we have these things called sound traps, which are sort of like independent hydrophones. So there's a mix of audio and visual equipment. Probably the most important procedure is just to be good observers, note how the animals are moving around their environment, what the behavioral context of the sounds is that they're producing so we can infer function. And we want to test some of these ideas by dropping down a speaker and playing back some of their sounds. And we have some predictions about what the, the sounds might be used for in terms of does the animal approach or go away or dive or start to initiate feeding. So we're, we're really here to test ideas about the functions and use of sounds in the whale's environment. And the way we do that is we take what's basically an underwater microphone. This is the hydrophone. So it's, um, it receives the sound. These get um, channeled into one of the computers. And what we're doing fresh and new this year is we're going to take those sounds and potentially warp them, maybe pitch shift them, maybe time stretch them, and see if we can't get the humpback to match what we are doing with the sounds. This is brand new and we're just getting started. Uh, it takes about three different software packages, three different computers, and again, uh, using the underwater speaker to rebroadcast the material that we create. Well, it's pretty exciting to see the number of whales that are here. Uh, it appears to be a pretty good foraging year from what we can pick up on the hydrophones and in terms of listening to the animals, also there appears to be a ton of prey out here this year. That's really good. Humpback whales were recently delisted uh, uh, about eight years ago, but since that time they've actually been through some population anomalies. And so we're pleased to see that um, there's good numbers here. There appears to be uh, good reproduction by these humpback whales. And uh, we're excited to be here. Our preliminary observations is, is that when they're here, they're pretty intent on feeding. So they require some innovative ways to sort of get their attention so we can start the dialogue going. And so far, we're still looking for that, um, the holy grail of alerting and interaction sounds. The SETI Institute bases their science on the Drake Equation, which essentially is trying to understand how many intelligent civilizations there are in, uh, in our Milky Way galaxy. And one of the variables of the Drake Equation is F sub i, which is the number of intelligent civilizations. And in order to 
assess that, we still need to understand intelligent civilizations and beings here on Earth. And uh, humpback whales historically have been uh, communicators. And if we can understand how they communicate and what they're saying, that's a huge step forward in possibly understanding uh, an extraterrestrial civilization's communication with us or with other civilizations. Humpback whales make great analogs for extraterrestrial life in that they are used to making very diverse sounds and packaging those for long distance communication. Also humpback whales and other large whales, some of their sounds can travel so far that by the time the sounds actually reach the recipient, that information may be antiquated. So these animals in their lives are constantly having to think about the distance of information has traveled and whether or not it's stale. And that's a very similar uh, scenario that we face as we move out into, put our spacecraft and our vehicles into the solar system. In terms of the bigger picture, we are thinking about how might we connect with life forms on other planets? What should we be listening to in terms of signals coming back? And we we're working with Lawrence Doyle from SETI to apply things like information theory to understand how whales are communicating. Is it a language? Is it, a, are, is it just signals? And the idea is that we're going to use the whales as a proxy for speaking with potentially aliens or for listening to biosignatures from space. What, what does it mean for an animal to emit a signal? So it's very exciting to have that big picture idea that um, the studies that we're doing right now have these broader implications for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Back in 2021, we had the opportunity to, to come out to this area and we had a great experience with a humpback named Twain. We broadcast sounds into the water and she responded. We broadcast 34 different signals and she responded 36 times. She actually responded even after we stopped broadcasting signals. Our analysis shows that she was, not only did she respond to us, she matched our timing which is super interesting because it shows that humpback whales have an innate sense of timing and they might use it in their communication. We're, we're actually ab able to enter into sort of a dynamic exchange where we found evidence that the whale was actually varying some of the components, particularly the, the spacing of its calls relative to our playbacks. And so that suggests that the animals under the right context are willing to interact and interested in what we have to say. So this year what we're doing is we're taking that data that study, that design, and extrapolating on it, trying to take it to the next level. So my background is in music. Um, I play both violin and, and percussion, and that gives me an understanding of how other animals might use pitch, frequency, and rhythms to communicate. And so what I bring to the table is an understanding of um, humpback song and the way that they use um, different parameters of sound in their song, which is very similar to music. And now that we're looking at social sounds, maybe the humpbacks also use some musical parameters in communicating to other humpback whales. Humpback whales are extremely diverse vocalists, yet we know very little about the function of these sounds in their daily lives. Having some insight into these sounds and which sounds are used the most uh, will tell us a little bit about how human activities such as shipping noise, might be influencing and affecting these animals. I believe that this research could be applied to two different areas. One is communication. How do we communicate with another animal? How do we set our parameters such that we are working with things that they understand and we understand? And it's a very exciting territory, like to be able to actually reach out to a humpback and understand what their social sounds might mean, understand how to say hello, how are you doing, and further the conversation. The second component is conservation. And these animals live in a sonic environment. How do we use sound to warn them of danger? How do we use sound, let's say in a disentanglement, to calm the animal? So these, the, our, our studies have very practical applications and very exciting applications because one, we are gonna further our ability to communicate with them and through conservation, our ability to keep them safe in our waters. The SETI Institute is a nonprofit organization and
and most of our funds are sought through writing successful proposals. Uh, some of the proposals are able to cover all expenses and some of them can't. And we are so appreciative and thankful that Sea Keepers are allowing us to be on this journey and uh, support science research at minimal costs to the organization and uh, we'd never be able to do it without you guys. So thank you so much. This experience would not be possible without Sea Keepers, connecting us to the most amazing couple, Don and Denise, the most amazing platform, the Blue Pearl, for us to do research on. These are um, very expensive expeditions to mount. They're very technically, there's a lot of requirements. It takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of coordination. And for Sea Keepers to connect us with such a platform and such wonderful people, it's absolutely essential to the project and, and our, we have deep appreciation both for Sea Keepers and Donna and Denise. Yeah, well we're super grateful for Sea Keepers in that you know, being able to pair us with this amazing versatile platform and kind couple and Donna and Denise to get us out on the water, you know, it's really these opportunities are extremely rare and wonderful and we're forever grateful. Thank you.